Hello from Pastor Ken Harley in Hong Kong. How you doing? It is our special week where we're talking about the Bride of Christ and we're talking going to have a special wedding celebration day this Sunday. Now we do have a couple who are engaged to be married so we said uh, uh, why don't you rent a guy see if he can come from the government and let's just have the wedding in the Kama Cafe and then you can have a wedding banquet later when you are, are ready somewhere else. And they said nah. But I'm uh, going to be speaking and I'm going to try to figure out some sort of way that we can in a symbolic fashion but in a heart fashion also celebrate our relationship with Jesus Christ our relationship as the bride of Christ um, so one thing I'm gonna do is I found these at our favorite little place and everybody is going to get a little bit of uh, kind of a flower stem a little bear isn't that cute <laughs> so um, some of my friends, I'd love to give you one. We bought a hundred, and I think you'll understand that uh, we're giving it to those who are part of the special service, and then we're going to go out to the street, and we're going to give uh, these and some other Chinese New Year's fishes and other stuff just to people and tell them Jesus loves them. So I imagine most of you who can't make it on Sunday, you'd rather give it to the children on the street. Um, but I wish I could give all my friends, especially my girlfriends, if I have any girlfriends, um, a beautiful bear and a beautiful rose. So you know I'm giving you that special feeling uh, to all of you out there. And um, Jesus loves you very, very much. That's what Mother was saying. If we could understand how much Jesus loved us, a lot of our problems would go away. Like... Um, when I'm questioning my foot, just saw the doctor today, and he's like, uh, it's going to take some while for it to heal, um, but it is looking good, it's healing. And I'm like, thank you, it's a lot better than, uh, cut, it, cut it off, cut it off. It's a lot better than cut it off. So um, anyway, um, today I want to talk about the other part of Galatians 5. And the fruits of the Spirit we talked about yesterday. But the things that people do, some of the, the sin list, um, when they're lost. And there's a reason. They're so lost and they're so broken and so destroyed by sin of life. They just think that's the way it is. And they get hard and cold and they do things. Okay, And uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit of a song that when I grew up, it was called Love God, Hate Sin. And this was how I saw sin and saw sinful practices, kind of like this song. Okay, so here's the song. Love God, Hate Sin. Can we see it? Hate Sin. Love God, hate sin. Okay, I think we're back. Okay, I'll shut it off now. I'm trying to touch it, but I have to use the mouse. <laughs> okay, now when we read Galatians chapter 5, we begin to see this picture that Mike Bickle and the IHoppers in Kansas City, throughout the world, House of Prayer people, uh, are sharing. Something that was a new revelation and revolutionary revelation to me. How's that for our words? Because we're in this idea, this idea that... The more we receive Jesus' love, the more we let go the pain, let go the past, we become a new creation in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All things old are passed away. Um, we Romans 12, 1. Offer up our body as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 3, 4. We are transforming by the renewing of our mind. The Spirit of God's within us, and He's transforming us as we understand who we are in Jesus Christ. And we understand how much He loves us. How much He loves us. There's someone here watching this video who would really like a bear, and they really like somebody to care for them and give them a bear. 
But Jesus is giving you a bear. He's going to take care of you forever, and you're not going to be so lonely. He's breaking those lies from the enemy, and he's going to say you're okay, and you're not going to be alone forever. Okay? Okay, so uh, Galatians 5, and we'll start at verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Remember that when Jesus... Now, I love the New International Version when they use these words. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Okay? I don't want to talk about the zombies, but that's what people do. And many years ago, I used this kind of phrase in a zombie movie I created, sorry, that if we bite and devour each other, we'll destroy each other. We are not zombies. We are resurrected from the dead, and we live, and we can choose a better path. Remember what we talked about yesterday? Joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, long-suffering, gentleness, self-control, and the law, there is no law because we are law of love, and we're being patient with people, and we're helping them and encouraging them. I got a call from somebody this morning, really early, and another call, and even though it was early, I talked to him and loved him and encouraged him, and hopefully I'll see him again, because that's what God does. When somebody calls you up and says they have a problem, the least we can do is take five minutes. I know it's hard. One time, I had a guy read me poetry at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday or 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday because his wife was a stripper and she would dance all night and then he would, they would do their thing and they had a baby and they were in a cheap hotel and near Disneyland and it was really horrible. So he'd call me up to read me his poetry because he knew I loved poetry and I would listen to him. And that's the least I could do. So, we don't need to bite and devour each other. We don't need to destroy each other. I'm telling you, I've been through some horrible years, the last few years, where I've seen people bite and devour and destroy each other because of grudges and unforgiveness. I have to admit, it's hard when you're in the battle to forgive but I need to forgive every day now, everybody I know, because I want to be healed, and I want my foot to be healed, and I want to have a life. I don't want to die. I don't want to suffer. But whatever happens to me, Jesus will be faithful to me. Remember that up here? You can see in the background the resurrection, the peacock resurrection. We are resurrecting through Jesus Christ. We are okay. Okay. So I say, walk by the Spirit, verse 16, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The Spirit isn't saying, don't do this, love God, hate sin. It's a great song for the time. But what the Spirit is saying, when you love God, you won't sin because you'll love, because you'll do the things that God has you to do, okay? And uh, we don't want to be fleshly. Now, Paul later on said, we are fleshly and we sometimes can't overcome. If you like drinking that nice little cocktail, you're going to want to drink it and feel warm and feel good, Okay? But if it gets to the point that it leads you to become nasty and to become foolish, then we have to get away from that and do something better. Okay, verse 19. Here's a list of the acts of the flesh. Um, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies. Okay? Now, we all like to say, well, that's not us. Okay? But a definition of witchcraft is rebellion to the Lord and His ways and manipulating. 
trying to get into spiritual things without having the authority of God do it. One day, many years ago, I was in Chicago, and a friend asked me to get some candles for our little service. So later on that night, I was giving a guy a ride home, and he said, I think you're a witch, because I saw you buy those candles, and because you do prophecy, okay? And I'm wearing black right now, so that was scary, probably, if I was wearing black that day. Jesus doesn't want us to get stuck in trying to manipulate people's lives, trying to curse people. Somebody cursed me last year, and I haven't worked because I've had this foot thing, and that was his curse. Is he happy because I got cursed and got my feet cut off, my toes cut off? I hope not. But I am not cursed. I rebuke the curse. I rebuke the witchcraft. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's sovereign. He allows this to happen for the glory of God. Not because people got mad because I didn't give them a thousand Hong Kong dollars gift. Can you imagine that? We are stronger. We take the lies of the devil and the shield of faith and we boom, 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 boom. We cut the sword of the spirit. Boom, 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 boom. We are not destroyed. Now, we have problems. We envy. I've noticed people have toes and they're going on trips during Chinese New Year and they're doing well. Even though they work, even though they're tired, they are doing well. They have a boyfriend. They have a girlfriend. They get to move around. They go to church services with their friends when I don't get to. Mostly because uh, it's hard to do a lot during the day. It's very, sp And also because I don't get invited to church services very often. Okay? But Jesus is our Lord, and He says, live by the Spirit. You're overcomers. Okay, what about um, factions? One group is better than another. I'm not a part of one faction in Hong Kong, so I don't get to hang out with the cool people. Isn't that crazy? How about this fits of rage? I get in arguments. I get angry. I don't want to. I'd rather be at peace and happy. How about you? We make these mistakes in the act of the flesh, but the closer we get to Jesus and the closer we get to Him, and the closer we get rid of the fear in our lives, all these things roll away, and all we have is love and kindness and beauty and joy and encouragement, lifting up others. Don't be somebody who's a spoiled sport, who wants to have the spirit of criticism destroy those around you. Lift up people, tell them something good about themselves. And like the old adage, we need to shut our mouths when we're going to say something nasty. Jesus had a, a better plan. Verse 25 in Galatians 5, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. But we can live by the Spirit. Okay? So one way to do that is close your eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to come over you. Let's try it right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You do it. There's 25 people out there that when you're waiting on the Holy Spirit, you start to feel at peace, and some of you will fall asleep immediately. There's a person with high blood pressure. The Lord says you're going to be healed. So try to avoid so much salty things, and just relax and rest in the Lord. There's somebody who just recently hurt their knee, and um, you're not certain if you're going to have to have knee surgery. The Lord Jesus says, don't listen to the doctors um, and think there's hope, no hope. I'm going to be your hope. So pray for your knee and try it out and then follow your doctor's orders. But Jesus is going to be a hope for your knee. Somebody who uh, just recently has a cut on their leg, the Lord's going to heal it. He's going to love you. Somebody who's uh, feeling really depressed, like you want to commit suicide, and we have to keep going back to this. Lord Jesus, break the witchcraft. Break the spirit of suicide that's trying to take this person into the darkness. 
you will be healed and you will love. Amen.